in what movie did you like the bad guy more than the good guy? Squidward's just trying to live his life in peace, and he has two man children constantly annoying him. Trying to think of the actual ages of SpongeBob and Patrick is unsettling to me. Aren't they like 16? SpongeBob is in boating school. Hercules, the Disney animated version. I really liked Hades' character. My sister loves Hades, the real one not the one from the movie, and says that he chose to be the king of the underworld. Hades from the myths is one of the more likable gods for sure. In fact the entire Greek mythology kind of fits this thread because Zeus is such a peen but was revered as the supreme deity. Dr. Doofenshmirtz just needed someone to talk to but all that platypus wanted to do was beat his ass. Honestly the poor guy needed to see a therapist because he has some serious childhood trauma he needs to unpack. Yeah. I can't believe his parents didn't make it to his own birth. That's so traumatic. As much as I love Clara Sterling in Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter is still the best character in the whole movie despite only have 16 minutes of screen time. Sir Anthony Hopkins was so legendary he only needed 16 minutes to put his character in the minds of every viewer. The fact that Jodie Foster kept up and did brilliant acting too makes it even better. Winning the best actor actress and movie was fully deserved. He got into the author's head too. He said it was the only character he had ever written that was aware of itself inside his mind. Weird crap. The B movie. Ken was the only sane person. Are there other bugs in your life? Tom and Jerry. And not necessarily just the movie, but the regular cartoon Shrek that antagonizing little mouse. He has no redeeming features. Used to watch the show every week waiting for the one time Tom would finally get him. I was the oldest of way too many kids and I always sympathized with Tom. That's the theory that the eldest child with side with Tom and the youngest with Jerry. The Monarch Adventure Venture Brothers. What kind of idiot doesn't even lock his doors? I'm not even going to flush. Let them see the wrath of the monarch. What can I do to this guy that life hasn't already? I almost feel sorry for him. Beat. De Niro. Pacino don't let yourself get attached to anything you are not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat around the corner. Agreed though you could make an argument for Wayne Grow being the actual antagonist for both Frig Wayne Grow. Wayne Grow is the agent of fate. That whole movie is full of characters who have externalized their locus of control. I do what I do best. I take scores. You do what you do best. Take down guys like me. Dina Rowe and Pacino both see themselves as being incapable of anything than what they are. Wayne Grow becomes the deciding factor for their fates. Kung Fu Panda 2. I like cold calculating villains who don't need to be ultra strong or puppet masters to prove that they're a real threat. Shen was really interesting because he was smart in his strategy and especially when he tries to stop his fate, but everything he does only seals it. Shen was honestly one of, if not the most intimidating animated villains around. You know what he could do, you know what he would do to get what he wants. Everything about him is just top notch. His design, his motives, his fighting style, everything. He's also one of the few who's insane, but not in an exaggerated or overdone way. Think of him like President Snow in Hunger Games basically. Willy Coyote. Dude was starving in the desert and just wanted to eat. I don't know how he can order all these gadgets and yet not order any food. Guy wanted to earn a meal. Man deserves to hunt. Emperor's New Groove. Isma and Krank. They're entertaining to watch until today. The Poison. The poison for Kisco. The poison chosen specifically to kill Kisco. Kisco's poison. You know, in my defense, your poisons all look alike. Meryl Streep's character in The Devil Wears Prada. So much more interesting than Anne Hathaway's character. And in many ways she was right. This is business at the top and Anne Hathaway's character was a naive child wandering into a battle of giants. Anyone who doesn't want to be a part of that world should just get the hell out of it. She showed a lot of patience with her and brought her far with the company, considering that she was brand new to the game. The job sucks ass, for sure. You guys are both right, but Meryl Streep's character was still a nightmare of a boss. As I get older, I sympathize more and more with the principal and sister in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I agree. 
As I get older, it becomes increasingly clear that Ferris Bueller is a colossal narcissistic bellend. I really enjoy the fan theory that Ferris is Cameron's imaginary friend who can effortless get into and out of trouble and do anything he wants with no lasting consequences. Mega mind but that was kinda the point. His brain just too thick. I love you random citizen. Rumplestilts can in once upon a time. Even before his redemption arc, he was just so much more entertaining for me than any of the good guys. Him and Regina were the true stars of that show. Robert Carlyle and Lana Pirilla absolutely stole the show. They're the only reasons I kept watching, tbh. Rumple was that villain who you know you should hate, but you keep getting pulled in with that little glimmer of hope that he might turn good, just to be disappointed yet again. And Regina showed that being good isn't always easy, but it's still the right thing to do. My heart shattered after what happened with Robin. The Devil in Bedazzled. Mainly because he's played by Elizabeth Hurley. Hilarious when Brendan Fraser can't stop crying at the sunset. Ah yes, I wish I was the most sensitive man in the world. Then bursts into hysterical sobbing at the beauty of the freaking sunset. OMG that scene was gold. Indespicable me, I think the bad guy grew was better than good guy grew, although I have some mixed feelings about it. Sure good guy grew was lovely to their adoptive girls, and started to enjoy the world more and more, which I think was positive, and he was still a villain after all, but the evil grew, that didn't give a crap about others and just wanted to steal the moon was a bit funnier. I think despicable me would have been more interesting if, instead of turning good at the end, Gru had trained his daughters up to become super villains in their own right. He had the opportunity to become the greatest super villain in the world and to be the best in something and chose not to and the idea of training his daughters to also become super villains is amazing. Just to think the girls would follow their dad's footsteps. They would steal the Saturn rings and other things, and it would be some female empowerment as well. Muppet Treasure Island. Come on. Tim Curry. That performance was one of the most perfect lovable rogue charismatic characters of all time. A black spot, and on the Bible no less. I rooted for Jared Butler's character Clyde Sheldon in Law Abiding Citizen. I'm amazed how long I had to scroll down to finally find mention of this movie. I completely agree. I wanted Jared Butler's character to win. Same here I was so mad when Jamie Foxx's character won. Mainly because it was his character that denied Jared Butler's character the proper justice for his family's death through the legal means in the first place. So many people died simply because Jamie Foxx's character cared more about his case, win percentage than actually getting justice for his client. In my mind, Jamie Foxx's character will always be the true bad guy in Law Abiding Citizen. The Rock. Nicolas Cage, seen Connery and Ed Harris. Harris assumes control of Alcatraz prison, an outerist destination, and uses it as a missile launch site to threaten the US government for ransom. On the surface he looks like a bad guy, so Cage and Connery have to go stop him. Later in the movie it's revealed that he only wants the reparations his dead men and their families are entitled to. He doesn't hurt any prisoners and though he's given the opportunity when the government declines, he admits he was never going to actually use the weapon. The movie is well written and the characters have depth enough to garner empathy for even the villain. Womack. Why am I not surprised you piece of crap? If you're going to Shan Francisco. There's just something about Predator that keeps me interested. Yeah he was just a hunter that was trying to have a fun time, preying on a bunch of gun-toting lesser life forms. No, the Georgia have a code of honor and the more kills you get, the more respect you earn. The Georgia came to earth to inspect the human ways and to also get some easy trophy heads. The Georgia have much more history and lore than just, big bad alien man wants to kill the humans. X-Men. Magneto was right. Magneto is indeed a complex villain. I won't say he's right, but I can see where he's coming from. I think Magneto is a complex villain because in general, he's actually an anti-villain. Opposite to an anti-hero, who does the right or a good thing for non-good reasons, Magneto does bad things, theft, quasi war, governmental corruption, and other super villainy, for a good reason, the continuation and lives of his people. He has more in common with the heroes, Xavier, than he does with the true to type villains. Breaking Bad. 
Hank was the only actual good guy in the show and an insufferable ass. What did Steve Gomez ever do? True. Minor character though. Walt Jr. and several others also I guess. Jaws, you want the shark to win in the book pretty much every character is a complete crap bag with zero likable qualities, so you want the shark to eat their asses. In the movie they made them slightly more likable and relatable, but you still want the shark to win. For the book I can see it, but I gotta disagree for the movie. Brody's fatherly qualities, Hooper's wide-eyed fascination and respect for science and Quinn's wartime experience all outweighed the fact that the shark ate a hot naked chick, a little kid, two innocent boaters, Quint himself, and a dog. A dog frick that shark. Don't forget that guy in the dinky little boat. The shark forgot his leg. The labyrinth. I mean, it's David Bowie dancing around with a bulge. This. I hard identified with Sarah until she turned down the chance to be the evil queen to Mr. Bowie's Goblin King. Like, girl, why? High School Musical. Troy and Gabriela are our souls. Ryan and Sharpay are both complete triple threats. You don't audition just by having someone sing a song. What about the dance call? What about the acting portion? What about the fact that Gabriela is likely to have stage fright on first night? Clearly it wasn't a skill based contest, just a hotness contest. Mr. Mosby. I mean seriously. You're head of a 5 star hotel and all of a sudden some twins rick everything up. I'm 20 and can already sympathize. As a 7 year old I always saw Mr. Mosby as the villain and bad guy. As a 20 year old I realized he was the only sane person on that show. Why don't we put on some radio who would you like AMMMM or FMMM? The Joker in the 1989 Batman. Played by Jack Nicholson. He was really fantastic. He was funny, liked Prince's music, was a snazzy dresser, and had a major thing for Kim Bassina. What's not to like? I think I was 12 the first time I saw it, and I legitimately cried when he died. He also killed a crapload of people with chemical weapons. Well, excuse us Mr. Perfect. I just love Loki. Ragnarok was his best appearance for sure. I loved during the film how he and Thor were just pointing fingers at each other. I've been falling for 30 minutes. I'm not a witch. Then why are you dressed like one? Squidward but also hates from Hercules. He's just so sassy and blue. You certainly have a type. May want to add Megamind to that group. Spider-Man. Homecoming. Vulture is a normal guy, trying to take care of his family, then the government, and Tony Stark especially, frick him over oily when he had a contract. Not only that, he does everything he can not to attack Peter. I see the whole movie as a working man vs the system story with Spider-Man there is a nuisance. The Vulture story is way more interesting than Peter's, and just in general he is who I would rather hang out with. He also killed a member of his own crew didn't he, in basically a fit. Also he was selling dangerous c weapons to low level drug dealers. The dude is interesting, and his motivations make sense, but he was definitely a bad person. He did, sort of on accident. He thought the weapon he picked up was going to hurt the guy, not vaporize him. He didn't. Seem to give much of a crap, after it happened though. The guy had also just threatened to go rat on him, for whatever that's worth. In Man in the High Castle TV show, the bad guys like John Smith were way more interesting than Juliana, the main character. Defn. I legit wanted Juliana to die. A burr group and Fuhrer Smith sends his regards. Controversial opinion but the ending of that show was way worse than Goatee. Just nobody talks about it because it was less popular. It basically has the same problem. They rush to a conclusion to wrap everything up and it just didn't really work, marring what was otherwise a great series. Anything with Christoph Waltz as the villain, but particularly in Glorious Bastards. Loki in Thor. Loki in anything. He's a bit more of a peen in the Avengers, but the rest of his stuff he's much more likable than Thor except for the third movie, where they finally gave Thor a personality. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I sided with Tako, the ugly guy. Absolutely, I recently rewatched this movie, and at times it felt like Tuko was actually the main character. He walked an incredibly fine line too. One moment he's sympathetic, you feel actually feel bad for him despite the crappy things he'd done up to that point. 
then in the next instance he shows just how dangerous he can be. The good and the bad both have scenes that demonstrate their great gunslingers, but that's all they seem to have going for them. With Tuco there's a desperate yawn to his character. Time and again he finds himself in multiple situations, where he seems finished yet somehow with wits and guile he finds a way out of them. Hands down the most interesting character in that movie. It's in some way due to the friendship that grew between Ellie and Sergio. At that point, Clint was tired of Sergio's directing and personality and Lee was sorta of typecast at that point to play villains. It didn't help that neither Clint nor Lee spoke Italian or French, since that was all Sergio understood. They needed a translator to get points across. Ellie spoke French, and he was an instant hit with Sergio. He decided that Tuco needed background and development, and left the other two hanging to dry for their own characterizations. Blondie has more subtle development in the trilogy, comforting the young soldier as he dies, hinting that he possibly had a wife and child at some time in Fistful, and even shooting the rope at the end. It has to be Die Hard. Alan Rickman as Hans Grubber was the best, then again he was fantastic as the sheriff of Nottingham in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves 2. Actually, I think I just probably loved Alan Rickman's bad characters. Anthony Hopkins in The Silence of the Lambs. Can Hannibal really be the true villain in this movie though? Wouldn't it be Buffalo Bill? Star Wars, original trilogy, Darth Vader is a much more compelling and complex character than Luke Skywalker. Luke is an annoying brat. Vader has a real moral arc, and I love seeing him develop. Yeah at first he looked badass. But then you discover the first thing he was ordered to do was kill children in the GD temple, so much for a badass right. That just seems beneath someone as strong as him. Sure he chose the Dark Force and is expected to wipe out entire planets, but personally killing children is just different. Exceptionally since they were the only ones to call him Master Skywalker. He could have snatched up a few apprentices. Wreck it Ralph. I'm bad, and that's good. I'll never be good, and that's not bad. There's no one I'd rather be than me. You are bad guy, but that does not mean you are bad guy. Die hard. Why? Because it's Alan Finn Rickman. At the end of the movie, he died hard. He was the title character. At some point in time, I started hating on Jerry. I just wanted Tom to kick his ass at least once. Just a bit of social justice. I felt the same way about Roadrunner. Is that strange? Nope. Imagine getting outsmarted and then getting your ass kicked by a mouse. No, not once. Since 1940. Yes, getting your ass kicked for 80 years, it gets boring and makes you wonder what will happen when Tom finally gets him, but he hasn't, which is what makes it boring. Ultron was the only interesting character in his movie, and I say that as a guy who loved basically every other movie in the series. Everyone else was so one dimensional and boring, and here Ultron is sighing and showing frustration, and calling people on their hypocrisy, and being the only character that feels human, even though he was a robot. I wish Ultron comes back in the MCU. I sincerely believe he will make a return in the WandaVision show. In Age of Ultron, the final scene where Ultron and Vision are shown, doesn't actually show Ultron being destroyed. Remember, Vision said he didn't want to kill Ultron because he was unique, but that Ultron was in pain and would destroy the rest of the world if he wasn't stopped. At the point that final scene happens, Ultron was stopped, had no escape, no possible way of threatening anyone, who is to say Vision didn't find a way to save that unique spark of Ultron in some remote, compressed way. Also, in the comics, Ultron is notorious for being unable to be beaten by finding a way to always squirrel away a portion of himself in some remote system to rebuild better than before. If the story of WandaVision winds up being Wanda using her powers of chaos magic to bring Vision back from the dead somehow, who is to say that maybe Ultron hid a tiny piece of himself inside and comes back as well. Dr. Horrible and Dr. Horrible sing a long blog. Captain Hammer is the real bad guy there. The hammer is my bean. Captain Hook. Peter Pan is a little piece of crap. Captain Hook is just doing his job. I'm sure that I read in the original fairy tale that the crew of Hook's ship are lost boys who grew up, so Peter cast them out of his club. He kidnaps kids and throws them away when they don't fit anymore. The swine. Kylo Ren. 
he was so much better than Rhea in every aspect and showed tremendous character progression. He did kinda become the good guy at the end, but seriously. His character arc was no doubt the best in the sequel trilogy. His arc was so great because he was so conflicted and confused. He had come from this great legacy but didn't have the guidance to continue it and so was unsure what to do. He tried to do the things that he felt were the best course of action at the time, but his uncertainty just left to everything being disjointed and not feeling right, almost as if he was jumping from one plan to another. His character arc was basically a perfect analogy for the storyline. Kylo starts to realize hey, this dark side versus light side thing is gonna go on forever like a swinging pendulum, history repeats itself, let's make our own destiny and Rei is like nah I'm with the good guys, had her lightsaber go brrr. The first one that came to mind is not a movie but a TV show. In Jessica Jones S1, the purple man, played by David Tennant, is the whole reason to watch that show. Such an uncomfortable performance, but a great one. Uncomfortable is definitely the word for it. I can't even read the name Jessica without hearing it in that deranged half yell of his. The Little Mermaid. Ariel is a princess who obsessively loves the monsters who actively hunt and eat her subjects. Then she falls in love with a guy whom she just met while he was actively in the process of kidnapping sapient fish to be slaughtered and eaten. Meanwhile, Ursula is a badass, everything she said about humans in general and Prince Eric was basically true, and those fishermen had it coming to them. I really want to see a play or movie like Wicked, but about your Ursula. Plus Ariel signs a contract without reading it. What a moron. Ursula was perfectly in the right to hold her to the fine print. I saw Titanic in theaters as a preteen with my friends. We all walked out swooning over how handsome he was and I said, and that gorgeous black hair. They stared at my, like I was an animal. I eventually fell for Leo as an actor, but maintained that Billy Zane was gorgeous in that movie. I mean, technically the bad guy in Titanic is the iceberg, and it did win. I mean, the iceberg was just chilling, minding its own business, when this asshole runs into it at full steam. The Dark Knight. I really sympathize with Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight. The dude just wanted to make Gotham a better place, but got screwed for it. So he tried doing it another way, and honestly, got results. In 2001, A Space Odyssey HAL 9000 is really the only character we know anything about. So it took me a few watches I didn't feel this way watching it live, nor the first time I watched the film, but controversial opinion incoming are in Burr vs Alexander Hamilton. I like the Burr character in Hamilton, but I read Chernow's biography of Hamilton and was like, nope, like, in the duel, when he's saying I don't let this man make an orphan of my daughter, I got a bit choked up. But in reality she was grown by then, and Hamilton actually had young children and a wife who needed him. But, yeah, I liked Burr in the show. It's interesting you say that. I say what I'm saying because of my own reading, though admittedly not the biography I'll have to check that out, just anecdotes of what he's done, like establishing clean and available water for New York City and trying to get women the right to vote way back then and nice to name just two. I'll just say they both had their very good points. I also read a lot of Hamilton's letters on the National Archive and found myself growing annoyed wondering, could this guy get any more preachy and self-righteous? Which I think is evident in the show, but it's interesting how you are pushed to view it from different characters' perspectives. Also, I never noticed that line. It kinda doesn't make sense and did have to assume it meant a different kid, unless they were just wrong. Theodosia is supposed to be contrasted with Philip who we know in the play was grown by then and already dead. I don't know how many kids he did or didn't have, but I agree, if they are referencing Theodosia, that makes no sense. No country for old men. Llewellyn's a cool outlander and everything but Jesus Christ there will never be a better antagonist than Anton Chigurh. Hans Lander in Inglorious Bastards. He's such a charismatic character it's difficult to not like him. He's charismatic and a big part of his character, at least as I remember it, I may be wrong, it's been years, is that he doesn't seem to have any personal motivation or prejudice other than the thrill of the hunt itself. Dude just likes hunting people down and being right. Adrian Vitaka Ozymandias. In the movie version at least. 
sure he killed some crappy heroes and some scientists, and lied to the whole world. Yet, he was working towards a necessary goal in the face of an escalating inescapable scenario, and, he gave Dr. Manhattan the clarity of self he needed, and an excuse to leave Earth. All in all, he was Nova Lane. Just the hero that world needed. Also knocked a few people 